Let's go. Come on, man. They did it. They got him. Let's go, man. Come on. Ain't you know just what I mean. You two team keep it clean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. Got to made it. So YouTube team keep it clean. What's going on? <laughs> What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And the time right now is 12.52 a.m. Um, we just came from live streaming the first round of the draft. And shout out to all of y'all because we had a lot of fun uh, in that stream. Uh, this is probably the, the most fun that it's ever been. Because, you know, we've been streaming the first round of the draft for the past four, five, six years, uh, and we always have a blast doing it. So I appreciate y'all. Thank you to everybody that came out. But, man, this pick, when Raven selected Rashad Bateman, it is crazy because this is the guy who I wanted the most. <laughs> this is the guy who I wanted the most. And, like, when, when you – when you like, and I made sure I didn't fall in love with any draft prospects this year because I didn't want my heart broken like it was last year. But it's like when you, this stuff just doesn't happen, man. When you you like somebody as a prospect and you think of all the different ways that they could fit with your team and, and you just imagine, man, what if? What if? But when that what if turns to is, what is? what's going down, what happened, and who got drafted. It's like, wow, it, it hits that much more, man. <laughs> and I, I love it so much. Love it. Now, with Rashad Bateman, with the Gophers, he, um, one of the things I noticed when I watch film on him is that they do a lot of what the Ravens did with the, the RPOs. They did a lot of that in Minnesota. So that'll be something that's second nature for him. That won't be a problem for him to get adjusted with it, to get acclimated to it at all. Now, another thing with Rashad Bateman, and shout out to my guy, uh, Jose, from uh, Lunch Break Hot Take, because he said it best. Uh, when, Because a lot of us clamor for these tall receivers, these big 6'4", six, 6'5", six, guys. Uh, and I can be that way myself, too. But my guy, Jose, made a really good point, And he said, it's not about the size of the receiver. It's about their play. Because some, some receivers, just because a receiver is 6'4", six, 6'5", six, it doesn't mean they play up to their height. And with Rashad Bateman, he's six foot six one, uh, but he plays big, and that's what we need, man. Rashad Bateman, when I watch film on him, one of the things that I liked the most was his concentration. He has a very good he has very good awareness when it comes to the sideline, um, and and he's not scared either. He doesn't play scary ball, uh, and and I I love that from him. And he's somebody that, after the catch, too, they can get special. They can be special. And he, him, just like Sammy Watkins, uh, Rashad Bateman, also just like Hollywood Brown, they have the ability uh, to move both inside and outside. So you can have different formations. Uh, you can call different plays where you can really uh, mix it up. And you could truly mix it up. Uh, Rashad Bateman is the go-up-and-get-it guy. Uh, he is going to fight for that ball. And he is going to do his best to make sure that he wins. Now, what we said in the stream is something about Rashad Bateman that was very important. Is that it, it says a lot about Rashad Bateman where this guy, he took off a, a lot of last season. Uh, because of obviously the whole C-19 thing, uh, but he was still picked in the first round. So what that lets me know and should let you know too, and when you look at the numbers, you see it, but there was that the level of consistency. There was the consistency, and he showed enough consistency uh, to the NFL scouts and obviously to the Baltimore Ravens where they didn't feel like, oh, man, this guy, he's just going to be a one-hit wonder. They felt like his level of play over the years was good enough to where they just really felt like, okay, 
Yeah, he's worth one of our first round picks. And they did it. They took him at 27. They did it. And this, like, like the, the, the theme of the song in the intro says, man, this feels like a dream. It really does. Because they, <laughs> because they got my guy, man. They got him. They really did it. And I know there were a lot of other Ravens fans that loved the idea of Rashad Bateman possibly coming to Baltimore. And I'm just looking forward to it, man. I'm looking forward to it. So two years ago, they drafted Hollywood in the first round. Not two years later, they draft Rashad Bateman in the first round. They signed Sammy Watkins. Um, but what this means as far as Julio Jones, because a lot of people asked about that. What does this mean for Julio Jones? That's over. That's over. I, after this pick, and, and I said this in uh, videos too, uh, especially the one about the Ravens being interested in Julio Jones. I said uh, over the next day and a half, in the next two rounds of the draft, first and second round, I said those would really tell us the story on where the Ravens are with Julio Jones. And with them, their first pick being Rashad Bateman, Julio Jones, that story is over. And my guy Nitrin made a very good point about Julio Jones, too. He talked about how with, uh, with since we heard so much about Julio Jones, then he definitely didn't think we were going to get him. And it makes sense, too, because with the Baltimore Ravens, uh, we don't usually hear about anything good or bad, but we don't usually hear about anything until after the fact. But since we heard about Julio Jones so much. And I know Sammy Watkins. I guess he's sort of an anomaly with the whole thing. But remember T.Y. Hilton? We ain't hear about that until after the fact with Juju Smith-Schuster. We ain't hear about that until after the fact. So we, we hear about things like DeAndre Hopkins. We didn't hear about that until after the fact. Adam Thielen, same thing. So you, you, you get where we're going. But with uh, Julio Jones, we had heard so much before. And it was like, hmm, it's kind of interesting. And it was a move that would make all the sense in the world for them bringing him on. But this, them drafting Rashad Bateman, uh, that, that kills that. So Julio Jones to the Baltimore Ravens, that I would count that as being officially over. And it's a wrap. Now, I still feel like he would have been a perfect receiver for the Ravens. And if they still got him, I wouldn't mind them going overkill. But they, they're not going to. They're not going to. So now that Rashad Bateman is a Baltimore Raven. <laughs> I love it, man. Oh, I love it. But now that he's a Baltimore Raven, that receiver room just got that much more crowded. Sammy Watkins is a lock on this roster. Hollywood is a lock on this roster. Rashad Bateman is a lock on this roster. Devin DuVernay is a lock on this roster. Miles Boykin, I feel like he is a lock on the roster, but it's a little bit shaky. And y'all know I love Miles Boykin. Love him. And I'm still hoping that he can really turn that corner. But he's going to be up against a lot. James Prochet. He's also somebody that's even more than Miles Boykin, much more than Miles Boykin. He's up against even more because this receiver room, it got that much more crowded. And he was already like, remember the end of last season, he was on the inactive list toward the end of the year because they had Devin DuVernay. They had him at punt return, which used to be James Prochet's spot, and they, they had James Prochet inactive. So it's going to be a very tough uh, uphill battle for James Prochet um, to not only get playing time, but even maybe even make the roster. It's going to be very, very tough. So this, and this is just after the first round. We've seen in Eric DaCosta's drafts where in the first round and the third round, he double dips at the same position. Now, in this draft, I would think that him double dipping in the same position in the first and the third would end up being that outside linebacker, edge guy, pass rusher. Uh, but it's to be determined. We will see tomorrow. Well, actually today. I'm recording this. So you know what I mean. So we will see in the second and oh, in the third round. 
But I love this, man. I, I, I absolutely love this pick. I love it. So I'm, I'm excited to see how it works out. Now, one thing to think about, too, one thing to keep in mind uh, with the pick of Rashad Bateman, as good as a pick as it is, uh, everything depends Excuse me. Everything depends on how involved he is in this offense. It all depends on that. So with Rashad Bateman, we we're gonna hope that the efficiency level of his play is up to par. Because you know in this offense, there are not so many different opportunities uh for the pass catches. Now, with Keith Williams and T. Martin. We'll see how much of an influence they have on this offense. I know we've been talking about that all offseason, and I know a lot of y'all probably tired of hearing that, but it's the truth. These dudes could have the best resume in the world, but if they don't have a voice in the offense, it won't mean anything. So there's a lot of pressure on Greg Roman. There's a lot of pressure on the Baltimore Ravens offense. There's a lot of pressure on everybody. Lamar Jackson as well. There's a lot of pressure all around. And now one thing, speaking about pressure, with the Ravens drafting him in the first round, this is also something that we talked about. This is exactly where we wanted them to draft the receiver at because it puts pressure on Greg Roman to make sure that this guy is involved in the game plan. You, you got to make sure he is because that's one of Eric DaCosta's first round picks. And if you think that Eric DaCosta spent a first round pick on a wide receiver, for that guy to be just, uh, he'll get involved yeah, here and there, uh, maybe, yeah. No. No. Of course not. So we're going to have to see how the Ravens implement him into their game plan uh, once the season rolls around. But this is a nice start. This is a nice start, but this is certainly not the finish. It's certainly not the finish. We just got to see how these Ravens put them to work. Team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Uh, and it is 1.04 a.m. So I'm about to go to bed. I will see y'all tomorrow. We out.